ACS Gas Training Controls. My name's Alan Hart and today I'm at Viva Training Academy and I'm with Russ and Russ is going to show us and explain to us how the controls work. This often catches people out on their acts training when they're going in for their exams because it's not we don't always cover, we don't always do this a lot in, in everyday life. Um, so Russ is going to try and explain this as, as much as possible. He's going to go to the go to a PowerPoint to start with, he's going to draw it on a board and try and explain it to you. We're then going to come back to this rig and he's going to explain it on this rig as well. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go over to Russ. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Thanks for that, Alan. Uh, my name is Russ. I've uh, been training in the gas industry for over 20 years and in the industry itself for well over 40 years now. We're going to try to show you today um, liquid expansion, liquid expansion controls. It's something that catches people out mainly because quite often they mistake liquid expansion for thermoelectric. The probe itself is quite similar to look at, the actual bit that senses the heat is quite similar, but there is no, con no connection whatsoever between a thermocouple and a liquid expansion control. What I'm going to try to show you first is how the actual liquid expansion controls the flow of gas. When we've gone through this, we will actually go and see one in, in action. So it's just, just bear with me for a few minutes on this one. What I need you to understand, and I'm going to show you four very simplistic, very simplistic diagrams I'm going to draw for you. I want you to look at it from the, what happens when that file heats up? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? I'm going to put you four little drawings on the board if you don't mind uh, they're all going to be exactly the same so we'll just throw you a little bit to start off with remember with liquid expansion you've always got a file full of liquid it used to be mercury it used to call mercury vapor valves they don't have that anymore it's just liquid expansion it's it's a volatile liquid that's all i'm going to tell you it, but it's not mercury that goes down the tube and it operates a little bellows Sometimes it can be a, uh, just two discs almost, but the, the principle is the same. That expands down the tube and operates that, that bellows, or whatever screw shape it is. And I'm going to put you two more up here, three more actually. There's your file with the bellows, and I'm going to show you again down here. Just to show you, if you can get your head around the principle of liquid expansion, all you need to think about is, what is it doing? What is that control designed to do? First two, I'm going to show you here, uh, if it works for me. Sometimes you get this drawing the wrong way around, guys, which bear with me. We go like that, and there's your gas passing through. It's going to go that direction. Hope you can see that, if you don't you know, have to change it slightly. And the other one, the other way around. Right again, that's passing through. Now then, notice the valves are the opposite way around. Think about this now. If that is heated, there's heat going onto that file there. That's going to expand. The liquid inside is going to expand, and it's going to operate that little bellows. As it operates it obviously it's going to move the valve. Now as that valve moves down in this particular case it's going to close the gas off. On this one it's going to open the gas up. Think about a gas cooker. A gas cooker. We turn the gas on it lights low. It lights low. We'll come to that a bit more in depth later, but for the moment it lights low. It lights low because this valve here 
is closed. And what they've got is a very small little bypass that allows enough gas to go through to your burner to light it. In reality, what you would actually have here is those two connected together. There's your thermostat. Thermostat. And this would be various names, but we'll call it today an FFD flame sensor or FSD if you like. Various names, flame sensing device, flame filling device, liquid expansion valve, various things. So you turn your tap on, on here somewhere. Let's just see we've got a valve here. Okay, you turn your gas on. This is the bit that catches people out, guys. The thermostat at this point is wide open. It's wide open because it hasn't sensed any heat yet. The flame sensing device on the other hand also hasn't sensed any heat yet, so it's closed. I've got no gas, I'm not lit, I've had a close. So when you turn the gas on to a gas cooker, it flows past the thermostat down to the burner where the flame sensing device is. Small little bypass allows that gas to pass through to the burner. You get a small bead of flame. Heats up the, pr the probe. Once that heats up and expands the bellows, you've now got full flow of gas going to your burner. As long as that sensor's heat, it will stay open. Now the full control now comes back to the cooker, the, sorry, to the thermostat. As this starts to warm up now in the oven, the bellows start to expand. And as it expands, obviously that valve will move down and it will eventually close the gas off. What I'm trying to say to you here is, the principle of a liquid expansion valve is that, is that it's exactly the same all you've got to think about is is what is it physically doing at the other end the principle is exactly the same liquid expands operates a bellows moves a valve or a switch or whatever it happens to be that's the bit that catches people out it's not um, going to create electricity or anything else it's a mechanical valve just to move down slightly, just to move down slightly, I want to show you here, if I can, I'm not the best drawer, as you can watch me figure out by now. I want to show you this time, instead of it being a valve I'm working on, we've now got electrical contacts. We have put a couple of wires on the end, make it a bit more realistic for you guys. Electrical contact. Now think about it with this one. The principle's the same again. That's going to sense heat. It's going to expand down the tube, operate the bellows. Same with that one. It's going to expand down the tube, operate the bellows. It's going to expand. Now look at those two switches. That one's going to break the contact when it gets to temperature. That one's going to make a contact when it gets to temperature. Where would you find that? This particular one, boiler thermostat, as an example. When you turn it on, it gets the temperature, click, breaks the contact, drops the solenoid valve. Breaks the, cools down, comes back together, click, solenoid lifts, main gas burner comes back on again. Very conventional, very Effective, very cost effective, they've been using these as long as I can remember, and they still exist out there, they still exist out there. Less and less, I'll argue, I would argue, but they're still out there. This, on the other hand, is the same principle, but now it's going to put power on. Pump over on, fan over on. You drove, you must probably drive to a job, and your radiator comes on on your, on your van. Quite possibly, it's that principle that's bringing your fan on, as it heats up in the radiator. More and more are going slightly solid state, but that's the principle you used to have. But what you've got to get your head around is, that bit there stays the same. The principle of liquid expansion. Liquid expanding, operator of bellows. All you've got to think is, what does it do at the other end? Is it operating a switch? Is it making a contact? Do I need power to come on? In which case it's going to make a contact. 
excuse me, do I need power to go off because it's up to temperature, thermostat? Thermostats work both ways, remember guys. Back to the mechanical one, flame sensing device, no flame there, cools down, shuts the gas off. Thermostat gets the temperature, shuts the gas off. But now, because it does shut the gas off, there's a little small bypass just to keep that flame lit till it cools down, starts to cool down, lifts the valve, and the main gas goes through. This might sound a little bit confusing at times, but what you're trying to do is get that principle in your head. Liquid expansion. It's going to expand and it's going to operate something at the other end. Now what I'm going to try to do is, now I've tried to explain that, I'm going to take you, up, take you to a, a control rig and show you that actually in, in operation. Following on from what I showed you on the uh, board uh, with the liquid expansion, I'm hoping now I can actually show you uh, it in operation. One of the things that catches people out on the ACS assessment is quite often the control is for want of a better word, naked. It's a control sat on a rig, something similar to this, and you're expecting, expected to be able to identify it or operate it, is it doing correctly? If you saw that control on an appliance, you'd most probably recognise what it was. But because it's sort of out of context, it can throw people. So try and look at what it's actually physically trying to do. Okay, so we're going to look at um, the gas cooker and we're going to quickly look at, if I can, uh, the boiler here uh, mainly because all the, all the liquid expansion controls I've shown you this morning are actually on here okay now remember what we said you've got a gas tap you've got a thermostat and you've also got the flame sensing device people get these mixed up they assume the gas tap uh, and the thermostat are after the flame sensing device. In actual fact, they're not. Uh, the thermostat technically is before it, but operates after it. And you see where the confusion comes in quite quickly. When it's turned off, there's no gas flowing, obviously. So you've got to turn the gas tap on. The gas tap, although it's incorporated into the thermostat, is effectively a separate control. Very similar to what uh, any other gas tap would be. So you turn the gas tap on, that allows the gas to pass through the thermostat, nothing happening there, the thermostat remember we said down, we said before, is wide open because it's cold, it's not sensed any heat yet. The gas now passes down through to the flame sensing device. The flame sensing device is varying operation, varying shape and size but they all do the same thing. That's actually closed. So people say well how is the gas get there? What you've got is a small bypass built into the flame sensing device. So when you turn this on, gas tap's fully open, thermostat's fully open, allows the gas down here and a small amount of gas passes through the flame sensing device. I'm just going to light this first guys. Now you also see people quite often pressing and holding that in. On a flame sensing device, liquid expansion flame sensing device, it's not like a thermocouple on some of the modern stuff. You don't need to hold it. You don't push it in, turn it, let it go. And then you can just literally press that. It's bad to see, but as it's lit, that's a little low. That's a little low. It's now warming up the small probe at the front here. What you'll find is, depending on what it's doing, the actual probe, the file with the liquid in, will vary in length and size. This is going to take a few seconds, it'll come up to full gas. If it's a flame sensing device, like we're waiting for now, they're normally a short fat one. Mainly because you need them to be directly in the flame and operating fairly quickly. That's come up onto full gas. Now we're sensing on the thermostat uh, file. Bigger, bigger, longer file because we want a more broad sense of temperature. You don't want to sense one corner of the oven, you want to try and cover as much area as you can. So now, as long as there's heat, let's come back around here guys, as long as there's heat, that one, now the flame sensing device, will stay lit. Now that's open and working, we now come back to the main thermostat. This now will control the flow of gas 
to maintain the temperature within the um, within the oven. What you'll find is they're all very similar. They're all very similar. In fact, they're pretty much all the same. All these thermostats are very similar. The actual valve on a mechanical thermostat like this physically closes. It physically goes down to the seating and closes the gas off. When you turn the thermostat knob to whatever number you put it to, all you're actually doing is adjusting how far away that seating is, or the valve is, whichever it happens to be. So it moves the seating or the valve one way or the other. So if you've got a higher temperature requirement, you move it further away. Literally by turning that, you physically move it away from the seating. So now that has to get hotter before it, has, it can expand enough to close it down to shut it off. So if I were just to turn that down gently now, yeah, it's still somewhere in here, I'll just wait for it to do it itself now. Well, that's waiting warming up. You must also remember in here there is a, a bypass screw. Thermostats and ovens have a little bypass screw. Now they vary, they vary, some are on the front, this is on the side, some are underneath, they vary. And what that does is, because it's a mechanical valve that physically closes, physically closes, you need to keep that lit. If it was an automatic ignition, it wouldn't matter. But majority of cookers, you light it manually, you go to work, expect it to stay lit. If it's shut off, your gas is going to go off. So what they do is they build a little bypass in here that when it shuts, it's just enough to keep it lit. Now as the oven starts to lower temperature, and I'll just explain that one there, as it starts to drop in temperature, like that, I'm doing it manually, but if you did it first on the thermostat, and that's down onto a low rate now, almost the same as the original low rate. That's enough to keep it lit. Now as the oven starts to cool, and the probe starts to cool, it will then start to up and up again, and it will do that all day long, maintaining the temperature you've set this to on the front. One of the complaints you might get is the, the thermostat is faulty. What happens, it comes on, they'll say it comes on, it warms up, it's fine, then it shuts off, and then I smell gas. Well, think about that one for a moment. If that gets to temperature and closes, the bypass maintains that, that uh, flame. If that bypass is blocked, it would shut off completely. So now when it opens again, as it cools, there's nobody there to light it. And that's where you get that small smell of gas because that little bypass rate from the flame sensing device allows that gas just to leak through. So make sure that is clear. Make sure that little bypass screw is clear and it is a very small hole that's in it, believe me. If you change the thermostat for any reason, also remember to check that, therm that the bypass is the correct one for the appliance. Because what you'll find is uh, the thermostats will be fitted to quite a lot of different cookers, but the bypass will be suitable for the oven size, the size of the oven. You're trying to maintain a temperature. Full gas on to get the temperature up, not a problem. But once it shuts down, you need to be able to maintain that temperature. So the bypass is uh, important, it's the correct size. There's a number on the side of it. So, very quickly to recap, we turn the tap on, gas passes through the thermostat, we go down to the flame sensing device, the flame sensing device, small probe, warms up quickly, keeps the gas open. Now we're being controlled by the long thin thermostat, which comes down to the main thermostat. As that gets the temperature, closes down, physically closes off, small bypass, maintains the flame until the cooker cools down, at which time the main burner opens, the main valve opens again to feed gas to the burner. I mentioned earlier about the bypass having a, a, a number on it. The number's important because quite often, as I mentioned earlier, the thermostats are used in quite a lot of different appliances. And because the oven, the volume of the oven varies, it's quite important to try to maintain the lower temperature. So what you'll find is a bigger oven will have a bigger bypass and obviously a smaller oven will have a smaller bypass. So that's why if you do change the thermostat, make sure that the bypass is the correct size. And it will tell you in the manufacturer's instructions what the size of that bypass should be. So that's sort of covering the uh, mechanical 
side of liquid expansion. Liquid expansion, remember what we said, is exactly the same principle, it's just the envy that changes. The thermostat closes when it gets hot, the flame sensing device opens when it gets hot, but the principle is the same. Liquid expanding, operating a bellows, operating a valve or whatever it happens to be attached to. So moving from that to the next control at the side of us, we've got a, it's effectively a backseat Bermuda back boiler uh, burner tray as they call it, complete uh, control section, multifunctional valve. Uh, and let, but, but what is important, what we're looking at at the moment is the electric thermostat and the overheat stat, overheat stat. And if you look at the probes on this one now, there's your hot water temperatures thermostat. And there's one down the side here, which would be the overheat stat. Remember again what I said about the size, the small one needs to operate quickly. The long thin one is a more accurate temperature sense. This one would, also, would either be in a, a, a wet socket, in other words inside the water itself, or a dry socket. But either way it would be inside the uh, water section of a boiler. It doesn't need to be as accurate as the oven thermostat. It needs to be thereabouts, but doesn't need to be as accurate. If it's 72 degrees or 73 degrees for the hot water, nobody's going to worry. Whereas the oven needs to be a bit more precise. So you'll find this is more of a, a sort of an average sized, middle, middle sized file rather than a specifically long one or a specifically short one. Same on this one, remember we said the mechanical ones literally physically operate a valve. The electrical one, I'm going to turn, I've already lit the pilot, I'm going to turn the thermostat on, up comes the gas, here we go. We're now going to sense, whatever temperature that's in, that, remember this is going to operate much quicker than normal, that would normally be in a water section of a boiler. But just to show the principle, that's now heating up, won't take many seconds and it will shut off, because it's expanding the liquid inside and it's going to push back and remember what we said, make or break a contact. This is a thermostat. So consequently, the thermostat will be, the contacts will be closed, putting power to the solenoid. As it warms up, that thermostat, the, the liquid inside will expand, push against the little bellows and operate the switch. Uh, which you should do any second now. Let's wait for that to happen. Because, as I said before, it wouldn't normally be so open to, just, to be inside a water section waiting for the water to warm up. But, um, oh. There we go. That's the thermostat now expanded down to the little bellows inside the controls thermostat, and it's now broken the contact. It's broken the contact. Now, as it cools down, obviously. As it starts to cool down, it will go back the other way now and contract and make contact again and bring the thermostat on. There we go. And up she comes again. Click, on she comes again. So that's making and breaking the contact. And we'll, even though it's electric, even though it's liquid expansion, we would call that a thermostat. So once we're happy that the thermostat's working, we also need to be aware, does the overheat thermostat working? Remember what we said again, this time it's going to uh, break a contact. It works the same way as, a, as, the main, as the main thermostat, but in this particular case, the overheat stat works in conjunction with the thermocouple. In, it, it called, it's called a thermocouple interrupter. I said earlier that the thermocouple and the liquid expansion were two totally different controls. Yes they are, but they can actually work in conjunction. The liquid expansion, as it heats up, if it overheats, can literally, by using the bellows, break a switch and make the gas go off to make it safe. So they can work together. A lot to take in, a lot to take in.
don't be frightened of reading the books on this and try and look at the different controls and hopefully make sense of them. If it doesn't make sense, ask one of your instructors, ask one of your trainers and they should be able to take you through and hopefully if you see it physically in front of you operating, it should help to clear up any uh, misconceptions and, um, and misunderstandings how they actually operate. Remember what we said, liquid expansion, it's all the same operation, it's just the end bit that changes. Valve closes, valve opens, switch closes, switch opens. Hope that's helped a little bit. I uh, hope I haven't confused you more. I will hand you back over to Alan now and we'll uh, hopefully see you, see you soon. Thank you very much. Well, thank you again, Russell, for that. Really, really good. Um, if you've got any questions on this, please ask them in the comments below. Um, and remember, this video is just to give you an idea. Always refer to your manuals. Always refer to installation instructions. Um, and any sort of documentation that you've got on your training um, and yeah um, I hope this video has been of some help if you've got any suggestions for any other videos like this if there's all that you're not sure of please ask again in the comments below and Viva Training Academy are, are really trying to uh, raise the standards in the industry and help you guys so as I say if you've got any questions please ask below and um, Thank you for watching.